Hi friends, it's Monica and let's review A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. For this book, I was highly anticipating it, especially after that ending in book two. And I was so happy that I finally got my hands on a copy and I did end up devouring it. I was planning on doing a reading vlog, but that didn't really pan out. But I'm sitting down and making a review video instead. A Curse for True Love is the third and final book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. And I do have this special edition that has like the inverse of the colors. Usually it's like a black background and stuff. I wanted to show off how they all look together for the entire trilogy. So all together, this is how the spines look like. And I love how it's like pastels. We have book one, which is Once Upon a Broken Heart. Book two, The Ballad of Never After. And then we have like a darker purple and they just look so good next to each other. Anyways, I do actually have a reading vlog for book two, Ballad of Never After, up as well as a duology review for the first two books in this series because at the time that I made that video, we didn't know that there was going to be a third book releasing. But anyways, those will be linked down below if you're interested and let's get on to the summary of this one. First off, let's start off with a series summary. So we're following a protagonist, Evangeline, and she is a hopeless romantic. When she sees that her beloved is marrying someone else, in a desperate moment, she decides to strike a deal with an immortal fate, Prince of Hearts, Jax. But very quickly, she finds out that she got a lot more than she bargained for. Throughout the series, we see Evangeline navigating curses, fairy tales, and a hot and cold relationship with Jax. Moving on to what I actually did think about this book, so I did want to talk first about the characters with Evangeline to start off. She is very resourceful more than she was before in the previous books and she had a lot of growth and she actually does acknowledge that she was a little bit naive in book one. Although throughout this book she was being dragged from one place to another and that did take me a little bit out of her story. However, along the way she did gather clues that something wasn't completely right. I do admire her fierce way of fighting back against her enemies and how now she really dictates of what she wants, is more sure of herself. And I really did like that growth that we saw for Evangeline throughout the series. Moving on to Jax, he is so overprotective and very incredibly complex. He's impulsive, he's infuriating, and he's also very charming. Throughout the finale, we see that he's dealing with a type of self-hatred in that he doesn't allow himself to even feel an ounce of happiness, and that's really sad to see. Jax is the type of character that you definitely would not want to be friends with. He is not the friendliest person and he will do anything to protect Evangeline, which we see very clearly in this book. I describe Jax as a type of love interest that will burn the world down for you no matter what and yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. He is a little bit unhinged and he can be seen as a villain in other people's eyes. It is a really nice dynamic between Evangeline and Jax. And with that, I wanted to talk about their romance. Their romance was a little bit different from book two. And in book two, we have such a nice fantasy romance going on with a lot of banter, a lot of scenes with the main couple. With the finale book, we do still have those scenes in there. Although there isn't any graphically sexual scenes in this book, there are still suggestive scenes because I think Stephanie Garber is keeping this series very YA. I love Jax and Evangelist's dynamic with each other. It's very hot and cold. You don't know what's going to happen next. And throughout each book, you can see the progression of their feelings for each other. And this finale really did hone in on that. I do want to see more of these two together because in some parts of the book, they are not together for a long period of time, but I am happy with what we did get. Moving on to what I really did not like about this book were the different points of views. We have points of views from three characters, Evangeline, Jax, and Polo. I understand why we had more perspectives, but I think without having a polo as a POV, there we wouldn't have lost anything. I think it was mainly to answer some questions and to tie up loose threads, which is understandable in a last book in a series. With Apollo's point of view, he is the villain and he's not really fun to read about. 
and he is just an awful person. He needs help. I was a lot more happy to read from Jack's point of view and to see how he is going about his wicked ways. <laughs> Another thing that I did not like about this book was the memory loss trope. This trope can be seen sometimes, it's not really common, but at times this memory loss trope is not well executed and it's very rare that it is well resolved. For this book, I felt like it could have been resolved earlier because two-thirds of the book we have this trope going on and it was very frustrating. I wanted more like true interactions with the characters but I think in the circumstances of the plot of the book and what has happened, it does make sense that it took some time for this memory loss to be resolved. Aside from that, I did end up reading A Curse for True Love, 3.5 out of 5 stars. The world is still very magical, we still see our favorite characters, and we still have some characters popping up from the Caraval series, the original series from Stephanie Garber. Stephanie, she really knows how to write that atmospheric and whimsical fairy tale as type of way and you really do get into that with this entire series. However, in this installment, it did fall flat in some parts because I found that Evangeline would be unknowingly and like unconsciously doing some actions or saying something out loud. It just came off as she was really ditzy, <laughs> even though I don't think she is ditzy as a person. It felt like there was a lot of telling instead of showing of what was happening but I think that can tie into like a fairy tale type of character. Although I did not like the memory loss trope and all of that, the last third of the book really did make up for those things that I did not like. There was so much action, there was so much romance, and we have a really wonderful resolution for our characters that we want to see win. Evangeline and Jax, they went through so much heartbreak respectively, and I'm really happy that they are able to get what is owed to them, which is a happy ending. And I really want to see more of this couple and who knows what next book that Stephanie Garber is writing. And I'm going to look forward to whatever project she is going to come out with. With that all being said, those are my final thoughts on A Curse for True Love and honestly the entire series as a whole. I really had so much fun reading this series and I highly recommend it to people that are interested in something more YA in the fantasy romance genre and really like that atmospheric writing. Thank you so much for watching this review video and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring the bell to not miss any future uploads and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!